What's going on everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be talking about EA and DICE and how potentially this might be their final chance at saving the overall Battlefield franchise. But before we go ahead and get into the topic, just very quickly, if you guys do want to hit up any of my other social medias, I do live stream on Twitch every single day besides Sundays. I have a Twitter account, which the DMs over there are constantly open. And I also have a Discord channel where I notify you guys about all things on my YouTube channel and my Twitch streams, and you can just interact with the overall community on there as well. If you guys want to hit up any of those socials, the link to those are down in the description. Now, unless you live under a rock, you know that Battlefield 2042 kind of marks a very dark time for the whole Battlefield franchise. You know, if we go back a little bit in time, Battlefield 5 was probably the true beginning. I mean, that was truly when the Battlefield community was extremely disappointed when it came to anything revolving Battlefield. And then 2042 just took that and times to by 10. Still to this day, after this update when they removed 128 player breakthrough, I just, I can't put it together on why they would do such a thing. I keep hopping into 128 player conquest and it just absolutely sucks. Battlefield 2042, is probably one of the first Battlefield games that just completely lacks any Battlefield vibes at all. And that's very rare because, like I said, Battlefield 5, yes, it was probably one of the most hated Battlefield games out there. But at the end of the day, people are still going back and playing that game current date over Battlefield 2042 just simply because it feels like a Battlefield game still. Even though they tried to change a ton of things down to its core, it's Battlefield. Battlefield 2042, on the other hand, mm, it's pretty obvious to tell that the management of this game saw the success of Apex Legends and tried to push Battlefield in the same exact direction, completely ignoring every last bit of information and concern from their community. You know, they didn't listen to a thing we said and then went on to clickbait us with trying to make us think that this game was going to be exactly like Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 games that we truly, truly wanted out of the Battlefield franchise to return and make Battlefield great again. If you really think about it, the failure of Battlefield 2042 actually comes down upon the management of this game. I mean, even multiple different employees and developers who work on Battlefield 2042 have come out and said that management has just been absolute chaos when it comes to producing this game. And the crazy part about the whole thing is that tons, tons of OG developers have left the development team at DICE, and there's a lot of new faces, a lot of new people are coming out of college, fresh out of college, coming into the game development scene, working on Battlefield 2042. They have no clue how to work the engine, they don't know how to properly put together a Battlefield game, they don't have any OG classic developers to, you know, show them the ways of how to put together a masterpiece, they don't have any of that, and management still thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and rush out this product. I'm sorry to say it, but I'm not sure if Battlefield will ever become anything better as long as EA is in control of this franchise. It's the same exact thing when it comes to Call of Duty, and a lot of people are extremely happy that Microsoft is finally buying out Activision. Believe it or not, the publishers have a lot of control when it comes to what goes on in these games. I mean, clearly, they are giving these developers the massive budgets that they have to go ahead and put these games together. I mean, Call of Duty, what, they get millions of dollars from Activision to go ahead and produce these, you know, massive AAA games? You know, without Activision, without EA, without the publishers, they want to have the opportunity to do these things unless they can find another way to fund their products. And let's be real here, the publishers are one of the main reasons why these games are going into the dumps. I mean, Call of Duty... I hate COD now. 6v6 is horrible all because of skill-based matchmaking. And guess who has control over the overall skill-based matchmaking? Activision. Same thing with EA. They control the skill-based matchmaking. Same thing with these goofy cosmetics and all these insane things that we're seeing in these games, these military games that we used to know as very, you know, hardcore military experiences, now turning into just silly shooters because the publishers want to expand into that market. They know the potential that the gaming industry has, and they know that there's a lot of children out there, a lot of people who like, you know, cornier things, goofier things, and even though it doesn't fit their exact title, they are still willing to go ahead and force it into there just to reach a broader market. And that's why a lot of people are happy that Microsoft is buying out Activision. Now, I'm still a little concerned because, you know, Microsoft isn't the best, you know, group out there either, so it's not like it's going to be, you know, crazy or anything, but I think a lot of people are expecting Call of Duty to make a better change with this buyout because at this point anything is better than Activision and at this current point I'm slowly starting to think the same thing about EA absolutely anything is better than EA right now but lucky enough for us Battlefield fans apparently EA is looking to sell or merge. Now again, I don't want anybody to get too excited over this information just yet because it's not confirmed yet. Nobody has actually put out a solid offer to give EA a certain amount of cash for this company. It's just EA coming out saying that if someone were to do this, they wouldn't, you know, look away. They would probably go ahead and possibly take up that offer. 
And like I said earlier, this is fantastic news to me. Now, it could potentially be a merge, which means they would just join in with another company. But at the same time, that would be good as well. Anything is better than absolutely nothing right now. EA having full control over the whole Battlefield franchise is an extremely risky move because they don't know what makes a good video game. They just look at their best sellers, their best products, and then they try to take that and force it into other products without knowing exactly what they're going to do. Anybody in the world will look at the current situation at DICE and say they need more time. Anytime you have a bunch of OG people who work for your company, it doesn't just have to be a game development team. It could be anything in this world. When you have a bunch of OGs leave and a bunch of newcomers coming in, sometimes you have to slow your pace down. You can't be running at the same pace anymore because you don't have those same individuals who go work at that same pace. And instead of having these OGs to coach these newcomers along to become better at what they do, they have to rely on themselves. You know, people who haven't been making these Battlefield games for all of these years. They have to rely on them to teach these newcomers coming in. So, like I said, anybody in this situation, anybody in the world will look at this and say, yeah, DICE is in a really rough spot right now. Should they be releasing a Battlefield title? No, I don't think so. I think they should have some extra time. But obviously, EA doesn't think this way. Activision doesn't think this way. Sometimes it requires a change in leadership in order for things to become better. One of the main reasons why Call of Duty flops on a year-to-year -year basis nowadays, in my personal opinion, and in tons of other opinions as well, is because they don't give the franchise a break. They have been consistently releasing Call of Duty games year after year after year after year, non-stop, never missing a beat. And it's gotten to a point where it's obvious as day that these developers aren't getting the time they need to produce an actual quality Call of Duty game. And like I said, anybody out there who's, you know, on the outside of this whole thing looking in would say, yeah, you know, it makes all the sense in the world to stop, you know, producing these games every single year. But Activision doesn't care. They don't care about how poor the product is being produced. They only see the dollar amount. They see how much money this game can bring in, and they don't want to miss a beat on that. And this lasted all the way until Microsoft finally said they're buying out Activision. Now, I know a ton of people are going to be in the comment section saying, well, Activision were the ones that came out and said that they're going to stop this yearly release. Microsoft never said this. Activision made the statement. Well, clearly Activision is going to make the statement. They want to sound as good as possible. But why is it that it took all the way up until Microsoft finally bought out this company and all of these horrible stories about their work environment and, you know, all this crap are coming out? Why did it take until then, until now, to actually act on it? It's because Microsoft bought them out. I promise you, sometimes a change of leadership is better compared to being worse. And EA is not a small company. EA is worth a ton of cash. So whoever is going to step up and actually purchase this company is going to be worth a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Meaning, to me personally, if they're worth that much money and they have the disposable income to purchase out EA, then skipping a few extra years to give the development team more time to produce a game won't affect their pockets compared to, you know, companies like EA or Activision, where, yes, they still make tons of money, but Battlefield, Call of Duty, these are some of their biggest games in their portfolio. You know, some of their best income, their yearly income, you know, the numbers that are really desperately needed in order to make shareholders happy come from titles like Battlefield and Call of Duty and taking a break makes those numbers look worse. But for example, Microsoft, they're worth so darn much, it doesn't bother them to take extra time off from a Call of Duty release. I mean, Halo, they gave them a full extra year. Halo Infinite got a full extra year. The only reason it's released right now with no content and all this bullcrap is because they made the title free to play. I guarantee if they made this a full bundle, campaign, multiplayer, all that stuff combined into one game, it would have been much better and the community will be so much more happier. But the actual quality of the game is phenomenal because they had the extra time to do so and it didn't hurt Microsoft. Microsoft wasn't, you know, hesitant about giving them an extra year on top of what they already had. It doesn't bother them. And hopefully whoever buys EA is going to feel the same exact way. And DICE will have a little extra time to polish off these Battlefield games. But ladies and gentlemen, do me a massive favor, go down in the comment section and let me know your opinions down below. Do you guys think EA will get bought out? And if they do, who do you think will actually buy them out? I don't really think Microsoft will go ahead and get some more companies like that. I bet you they could. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't they? They have so much cash, but I don't know. I think it'll be a big problem. I'm pretty positive someone else will either try to merge or buy them out. And if so, do you think it'll be a positive thing or do you think it'll be a negative thing for the future of Battlefield? But ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for tuning in this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. Bums, I hate it. Leave a dislike. Also, if you're brand new, enjoy the content. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that 
that verification button. Also, on chat for this too, is do so have Twitter and Discord, both linked down in the description. And also, if you want to catch me live streams of video games, do it over on Twitch. Link that is in the description as well. But guys, thanks so much for tuning in. See you all next one. Peace out.